Now, improving solar output from existing solar panels without increasing the cost dramatically, well, it's a bit of a holy grail, isn't it? And there have been lots of people who've been trying to do exactly that. But just this month, Penn State have come up with something that I think ranks right up there with the invention of sliced bread. It's just plain awesome in how effective and simple and easy it is to do. Now, it doesn't directly increase the amount of electricity produced. It's a dual harvester. What it does is it uses passive radiant cooling to reduce the temperature of anything beneath the solar cell. And of course, there are acres of solar cells on everybody's roof. Given that about 30% of energy is used for air conditioning, being able to keep the building cool beneath a solar cell and combining that together with the solar cell is where they're getting their huge improvement from. The sun puts out ultraviolet light, visible light and infrared, and infrared is what's responsible for heating. It's why solar thermal works. The way passive radiant cooling works is that infrared bit is reflected back away. And the wavelength of that light is actually coincides with the window in the Earth's atmosphere of the same wavelength, so that infrared is just radiated back out into the deep colds of space. And of course, anything underneath there is kept amazingly cool, anywhere between sort of four and 10 degrees centigrade difference, which is huge. Now, there are mostly in the form of plastic films and paints, and uh, Nighthawk in light made one, I think his was from calcium carbonate, and Tech Ingredients made one, and I think his was from barium sulfate. Either way, these are paint pigments that will reflect the right range of infrared light into outer space, and of course, keep what's beneath it nice and cool. And the proposal is to paint buildings with these paints to reduce the energy consumption and so improve our energy usage. Now, of course, painting a solar panel with a reflective paint is not the best of ideas. And what Penn State did is they had a cast around them. And what they came up with was this. It's just a commercial glass by Pilkington called OptiWhite, and it's a low iron glass, and you can buy it for about three pounds a square foot, which for glass is not very expensive. It was developed by Pilkington because of our love affair with skyscrapers covered in glass and the desire not to boil the office workers alive, and it's designed to reflect infrared so reduce the cooling load on office buildings. And of course, it's used all over the place. So there's a lot of it about. And so it's a commodity product that's really cheap, that reflects infrared. So Penn took a lump of it and stuck it on top of a solar cell and took some measurements. What they found was that, of course, the glass did absorb some of the light and reduced the efficiency of the solar cell underneath the glass. So they produced 91% of what was originally producing without the glass in place. But when you factor in the reduction of heat and the fact that that can be used 24-7 as a passive cooling system, then the reduction in energy meant that the overall production of the unit was in fact significantly increased. And when you factor in that this is done all in the same space, so you're not having two systems, you don't have one system as passive cooling and the other system as a solar cell, it's all one system and so the installation cost would be dramatically reduced as well. And they think this makes it a very viable option and it certainly looks very interesting. However, there is something that they didn't look at. I mean, they performed these tests outside over a period of time. But if you remember this video, when we looked at the effect of just hanging the solar panel straight up, it was a Dutch innovation because over time, people have noticed in solar farms that if you hang them vertically, instead of aligning them to the sun, there is an anomalous increase of about 5% of energy production just because the solar cells are cooler when they're hung vertically. Now, Penn State didn't look at this. They didn't look at maybe doing a much larger scale operation, looking at the effect it would have over, say, a year, for example, like the Dutch did, and that may produce a much more interesting result. I mean, I'm not taking away from the result that they produced. I thought it was awesome, which is why I'm reporting on it. But I also think that this would be a very interesting thing to do over over, say, a year to see if that cooling effect had the same effect 
that hanging them vertically did. Because if you remember, the Dutch said that hanging them vertically was straight down to a cooling effect. Even though the solar cells weren't getting any more light, in fact they were getting reduced light, they were producing 5% more just by hanging them vertically. Here, if we cover them with a bit of glass, it would be an interesting experiment to run for over a year, say, and see what kind of anomalous results may or may not arise. And that, I think, is super exciting. Of course, this is an easy thing for anybody to do because there are no exotic materials. There's no material preparation here. All you have to do is buy a bit of glass and buy some solar cells, set it up and see what happens over a year. So anybody could actually give this one a go. Now the paper is open access and I've put a link to it in the um, description below along with the link to Nighthawk in Lights video and Tech Ingredients in video and the uh, previous videos that I've done if you want to follow this one up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.